Li Yu was spending his free time with his friend from the basketball club at his house. But suddenly his friend dropped the ball and it rolled to the door where they noticed someone else. The unexpected visitor was Jan Su Yin, the brother of his friend. When their eyes met, something happened that he never believed in. Su Yin fell in love at first sight. Jan Su Ling was very happy to see his brother again and introduced Li Yu to him with a smile. Su Yin wonders why he hasn't met him before, but he is even more confused by his heart, which seems to have gone crazy when he met Li Yu. Su Ling explains that he and his grandfather, Principal Li, have only recently returned to the city, and that is why he has not met him before. Su Yin is happy to meet Principal Li's grandson and says that he can call him brother and extends his hand to shake. Li Yu, calling Su Yin brother John, shakes his hand and something in this handshake interests John Su Yin. Su Yin liked Li Yu, who had a good fit body, long arms and legs, and was very handsome and sexy. He patted Li Yu on the shoulder, noticing his big muscles, and asked him to turn off the air conditioner, saying that their clothes were still wet and they might get sick. All of this frightens Li Yu. Su Yin wonders where all their relatives are, and his brother embarrassedly says that they are all busy and might not be home today. Su Yin, looking at Li Yu, says that they have to feed his classmate because they rarely have her over. Su Ling goes to the kitchen, leaving Su Yin and Li Yu alone, which makes Su Yin very happy. They sit down on the sofa, and Su Yin looks at his brother's classmate, and his thoughts and imagination play out in a rather spicy mood. Su Yin tries to start a conversation by looking at Li Yu more closely with a not so decent look, and Li Yu in turn responds dryly and tries to ignore him. This makes Su Yin very unhappy. He thinks that this is because his brother might have said something about him, but he does not give up and takes it as a challenge because he likes to subdue such proud and independent people. He starts to get even closer to Li Yu, asking him what his name means, putting one hand in his lap, and just being very close to his face. Su Yin continues to bombard him with questions which Li Yu does not like. He gets up and starts to go to his friend's kitchen to help him, but Su Yin stops him and tells him that he is her guest and should just sit and relax and asks if his brother has a girlfriend. Li Yu replies that Su Lin has no one, and Su Yin in turn asks Li Yu with a smile if he has anyone, which catches the other off guard. He replies to Su Yin with a look that he has no girlfriend. Sun Yin is pleased with this and says that he will go check on his brother in the kitchen, leaving Li Yu alone in the living room. Meanwhile, Su Ling finished cooking. When Sun Yin entered the kitchen, he noticed a good smell, which confused Su Lin a little because his brother was surprisingly kind today. Su Ling finished cooking, put the dishes on the table, and asked his brother to call Li Yu to the table. At the table, Su Yin offered Li Yu a glass of wine, but Li Yu refused because he did not know how to drink. But Su Yin insisted and said that he should not worry because the wine was weak. Li Yu still wants to refuse, but Su Yin does not let him and asks him to honor him and drink with him, especially since the wine is fruity and has almost no alcohol. Li Yu finally gives in, takes the glass and drinks a little. Su Yin laughs and says that he is like a child and asks his brother to show his guest how to drink. Su Ling obeys his brother and drinks his glass in one go, causing him to cough, which makes Li Yu pat himself on the back and worry, but he tells him that it's okay. Su Yin offers Li Yu to drink with him, and they clink glasses. Su Yin smiles comfortably while Li Yu looks at him with disgust. Su Yin could not escape his gaze, and he, Su Yin, felt incredibly pleased to see it. Their company was eating at the table. Su Yin asked his brother to clean his shrimp, and he immediately agreed. Li Yu wonders why his friend is once again doing everything his brother asks. This makes him unhappy, which can be seen in the way he looks at Su Yin when he is handed the shrimp. Su Ling says they need to shower after the game and leave Su Yin and Li Yu alone again. Su Yin smilingly suggests that Li Yu shower in his room. Li Yu refuses, but Su Yin says it will be faster, and they are similarly built and he can take his clothes if he needs to. Li Yu is unhappy with the situation, but agrees anyway and follows Su Ying to his room. Su Ying sends Li Yu to the shower while he chooses clothes to replace him. While Su Yin thinks that sooner or later he will be able to get what he wants with Li Yu, he finishes the shower and asks for clothes. Su Yin's cheeks turn red when he sees Li Yu's pumped up body. While Su Yin was dreaming, Li Yu finished dressing and called him by name, which brought him out of his trance. After a while, they came to the garage where the John family's cars were kept. Seeing all those cars, Li Yu's eyes lit up. Su Yin was happy to see this because he had finally found something that could be used to attract Li Yu's interest. And Su Yin suggests that Li Yu choose a car and hugs his shoulder, telling him not to be shy and to think carefully about what he wants to drive. Seeing this picture, Su Ling turns away and looks upset. Su Ying took the car and drove her to her dormitory. Seeing Su Ling pull Li Yu away from him, Su Yin thinks about his desires. At home, Su Yin thinks about the consequences of his plans for Li Yu, 
and what the Lee family, including Principal Lee, might do to him. Li Yu receives a letter from his father asking him to pick up his brother for a family dinner, which Li Yu is clearly not happy about. Su Ling was in the middle of a game, but when he notices his brother, he happily runs up to him to ask the purpose of his visit. He is talking about his father's order to have lunch with him when he suddenly notices someone he had almost forgotten. Su Ling calls Li Yu to her. The moment Li Yu reappears in front of Su Ying, the fire of desire for him, which had been extinguished for a long time, is rekindled in Su Ying. When Su Yin learns that Su Ling has invited his friends, he is a little surprised. But then Li Yu, looking at him with disgust, tells him something he had completely forgotten. Today is his brother's birthday. There is a festive atmosphere at the birthday party, and Su Ling happily gives the first piece of birthday cake to her dear brother. It's time to give presents, and Su Yin gives his brother a check for money, which makes his father furious. Su Yin is irritated by this situation because no matter what his father thinks and says, he will never carefully choose a gift for the son of a woman he hates. He leaves without finishing the piece of cake his brother gave him, saying that something happened at the office. Su Ling is confused by the situation and gets up to see his brother off. Li Yu, seeing the situation, stops Su Lin as it is his holiday and it would be wrong for him to leave his guests and goes with Su Ying himself. While walking with Su Ying, Li Yu asks him if he really forgot Su Lin's birthday, to which he receives a cold confirmation. Li Yu asks him to at least congratulate his brother, whom he has always admired. Su Ying is displeased with his last words. Su Yin refuses to comply with Li Yu's request, but he asks him to at least send a message, which Su Yin agrees to do. After sending the message, he shows it to Li Yu so that he will finally leave him alone. Li Yu is pleased and thanks Su Yin with a beautiful smile. After that night, Su Yin could not get the image of Li Yu and his smile out of his mind. He's looking forward to the end of the exams and seeing Li Yu again. As the exams approach, Su Yin, unable to bear the long separation from Li Yu, decides to go to the place where he usually plays basketball. When he arrives, he does not find Li Yu there. Upset by his failure, he decides to leave to find a place where he can relax. Suddenly, he was called by a familiar and pleasant voice. When he turned around, he saw the person he had been dying to meet. When his classmates noticed that Li Yu was talking to someone, they recognized him as Su Lin's brother. They were missing someone to play with, so they offered Su Yin to play with them. Su Yin gladly accepts their offer and joins the game despite his office attire. Jun Su Yin is fascinated by the game, and at some point he notices Li Yu running towards him to take the ball. When he saw this handsome man running towards him, he fell into a stupor. Li Yu, not having time to stop in time, knocks Su Yin down and they both fall onto the grass. This blow damages Su Yin's leg and he cannot continue to play, but he is happy about this situation because at this moment Li Yu is worried and concerned about him. Li Yu realizes that it will be difficult for Su Yin to drive in this condition and asks him to give him the keys so that he can take Su Yin home. Li Yu drives Su Yin home and helps him out of the car, but when he stands on his bad leg, Su Yin collapses and falls on Li Yu's chest. Li Yu is embarrassed by the situation and asks Su Yin not to hug him, but Su Yin won't let him and says that his leg hurts a lot and it will be hard for him to walk. Li Yu helps Su Yin to the apartment and prepares a meal for him. While Li Yu is preparing the food, Su Yin suddenly asks him to help him undress so that he can take a bath. He helps Su Yin undress and tries not to stare at him. After helping Su Yin undress, he decides to go to the kitchen to check the water on the stove, but Su Yin stops him. Su Yin asks him not to leave him like this and to help him to the end, to which Li Yu agrees, but Su Yin loses his balance and falls into Li Yu's arms. Li Yu is embarrassed by the whole situation, but he still helps Su Yin into the bathroom and then goes to the kitchen to finish cooking. Su Yin has finished bathing and calls Li Yu to bring him a robe. When he finished drying himself, he noticed that Li Yu had not come and thought that he had frightened him by his actions. Su Yin decides to leave the bathtub by himself despite the pain, but he's blocked in his tracks. Li Yu, shyly looking away from Su Yin's body, hands him a robe. Su Yin puts on the robe and tells Li Yu that he is acting like a little girl. They are two men and he need not be ashamed of him. He brags about his chiseled body and talks about his training to get there. He teases Li Yu by telling him that men should also have a waist. Su Yin leans down to his waist and asks him something Li Yu didn't expect if he has slept with anyone. He laughs at his question and tells him he doesn't have to answer. Li Yu is displeased and outraged that such a frivolous and vulgar person is Su Lin's brother. Li Yu helps Su Ying to sit at the table and served him some food. Immediately after that, he abruptly leaves Su Yin, which surprises him. Su Yin blames himself for overdoing it with Li Yu and regrets that he did not stay with him longer. Su Ling learns from his brother that he has injured his leg. This often happens during the game, and he knows what to do. So he gathers medicine and tells his brother that he will be back soon. Su Yin asks Li Yu to go with him. His father, who overhears the conversation, 
tells Su Lin that he will be staying at his brother's house for the night and that he should pack his things. They waited a long time for Su Yin to open the door. When Su Yin opened the door, they saw that he had difficulty moving, and Su Ling helped his brother to go back. In the living room, Su Ling is concerned about her brother's condition and offers to help him massage his leg. Su Yin refuses, but his brother insists. Su Yin is unhappy with the situation and does not want his brother's help, but agrees because he thinks it might make Li Yu sympathetic. Seeing the situation, Li Yu is irritated and does not understand why Su Ling continues to please her brother and tries to win his favor. Before coming to Su Yin, they stopped at a supermarket, and Su Ling was happy to talk about his brother. Although Su Ling only wants to help his brother, Su Yin is unhappy with the pain and yells at him, which makes Li Yu angry. Su Yin's anger reaches its peak, and he kicks his brother with his good foot, causing him to fall. Liu Yin, who has seen all this, explodes in anger and shouts at Su Yin that Su Ling does not deserve to be treated like this for his efforts. Su Ling, embarrassed by this situation, pulls Li Yu's arm and whispers to him, asking him what he is doing. Su Yin, who feels no guilt for this, replies with a cold smile and mockery that Li Yu is very caring to be so angry when he, Su Yin, only slightly hurts Su Lin. Su Ling doesn't want to continue their quarrel and turns the conversation to the crayfish he and Li Yu bought for him earlier on the way to Su Yin's and urges everyone to eat it. Su Yin is consumed by memories of his childhood, when he used to eat spicy crayfish with his mother, and how, at one of these meals, his mother and father had another big fight in front of him. As a result of one of these fights, John Duyuan, his biological father, left the family, leaving his wife in the shoji, and little Su Yin depressed and confused. The mother carried the burden of caring for the family and little Er Yin alone, which took a toll on her health. As a result, she left this world prematurely. Chan Duyuan took his son to live with him. He already had a new wife and son, and Su Yin had hated that woman since childhood. Su Yin wanted to take revenge on his father and make him suffer. And at that time, Su Yin abused his new younger brother. He was suddenly brought out of his unpleasant memories by Su Lin, who served him cleaned crayfish. At the end of the meal, Su Yin stressed that they should not overeat because they had exams tomorrow. Su Ling takes this as his brother's concern and is happy about it. Su Yin is surprised that they are fine after so many acute crabs and notices their stamina. Su Yin notices that the family expects great success from Su Lin, and when he gets into University X, they can ask him for anything. Su Lin is very happy about this. Su Yin sends them off to rest, and they go off to talk happily about their plans for the future. Su Yin, looking after them, thinks about his wish to be alone with Li Yu. Su Yin was walking to work because of a traffic jam when he met Li Xuan, Li Yu's older brother. Waiting for the exams to end, Li Xuan and Su Yin talked about their business. After a while, the exam was over, and people began to leave the university building. Noticing Li Yu's appearance, Su Yin happily called out to him, which surprised Li Xuan. With a smile, Su Ying asks Li Yu about the exams and encourages him. Looking at this picture, Li Xuan looks confused. Su Yin is unhappy to pick up his brother because of Du Xuan's request. But Su Ling is happy to meet his brother, any brother. At the family dinner, Du Yuan often compares Su Ling and Su Yin, even mentioning that Su Yin stole his car when Su Ling was younger to have fun with his friends. Su Yin, clearly unhappy with this situation, tells his father directly to say what he wants. Du Yu Yan, looking at Su Yin with displeasure, wants to send Su Lin to Su Yin's school, to which Su Yin replies that he can only offer his brother to wash dishes. Zhao Yan, Jian Su Lin's mother, was embarrassed and confused by their argument. But Su Lin abruptly interrupts the conversation. He resolutely declares his desire to work for his brother, even if he has to start with a simple cleaning job. Tired of arguing with his father, Su Yin gets up to find their food and allows Su Lin to come to his practice if he wants. As he drives away in his car, Su Yin angrily thinks that he expected this from Su Ling and Zhao Yan, but not from Du Yuan. After stopping the car, Su Yin collapses in his chair with a bad feeling in his heart. Taking out his phone, he wants to find someone to help him distract himself and relax. And then he notices Li Yu's number, which makes him smile. He talks to Li Yu for a while, but asks him more about Su Ling. Su Yin suggests that they meet, but Li Yu, knowing that Su Ling will not be there, refuses, saying that he is going to bed. At the end of the conversation, Su Yin says that he may come to Li Yu in his dreams. Li Yu is startled by these words. Despite all his work, Su Yin still remembered to invite Li Xuan for dinner, but he had already turned him down twice because he could not find any free time. Suddenly, for the first time, he received a message from someone who had been on his mind for a long time. He was surprised to find that it was from Li Yu. At the request of his brother Li Xuan, Li Yu arranged for Su Ying to meet him tonight. Su Ying, who arrived earlier, receives a message from Li Xuan informing him that he will not be able to come tonight and that Li Yu will be there instead. Su Ying is happy about this. While waiting for Li Yu, Su Yin checks her appearance and admires her beauty. 
When Li Yu arrives, Su Yin greets him with great courtesy and gives him tea. When Li Yu learns that Su Ling will be doing an internship in Su Yin's company, he smiles brightly and asks Su Yin to let him do an internship with him. Su Yin is obviously hesitant, but Li Yu shows confidence and persistence, which Su Yin likes. He gives Li Yu his first assignment and they set off. As it turns out, the destination is a gay club that even Su Yin did not know about. Confused and ashamed of their situation, he tells them not to go in. Li Yu replies that everything is fine and they can go, which surprises Su Yin. Noticing that Li Yu's eyes are wandering, Su Yin approaches him and whispers to him to see if he has found anything of interest. Li Yu shakes his head and gets up to go to the toilet, but Su Yin grabs his arm and stops him. He has drunk too much because he had to drink himself because Li Yu refused and asks him to help him to the toilet. Li Yu teases Su Yin that he gets drunk too easily, and Su Yin, under the influence of alcohol, begins to make advances toward Li Yu. Li Yu does not like this situation and, irritated, walks away from Su Yin, leaving him alone. When he returns to the table, a drunken body blocks his way. On his way back from the toilet, Su Yin sees this situation and prepares to defend his husband. Before Su Yin can approach, he sees that Li Yu has already broken the rude man's arm and is on his knees. The ruffian's friend tries to intervene but is hit by Su Yin and chased away. Su Yin, worried about Li Yu, takes him by the hand and asks him how he feels. But the manager and the club security arrive. Li Yu takes his hand away, and as he is in a state of Pringo because of the past situation, he says that he should go home, and Su Yin, seeing Li Yu's condition, says that he will take him home. While driving back in the car, Su Yin looks at Li Yu and realizes why those idiots couldn't control themselves when they saw the handsome Li Yu. Su Yin was upset that those rascals had ruined his and Li Yu's first date. Li Yu is upset that they picked on him and doesn't understand why he is their target. 148. Su Yin was about to tell him that he was a fine young man with a very handsome appearance, but as soon as he started, Li Yu turned sharply and looked directly at him. Those words never left his mouth, and he thought of less embarrassing words. After a while, Su Ying and Li Xuan managed to meet and talk about work. Li Xuan took the opportunity to ask Su Ying to take care of his younger brother. Li Yu came to his first day's work in his clothes, which are not suitable for their work. Su Yin says he will take him to buy some proper clothes. Li Yu wants to wash them, but Su Yin pulls him along. They arrive at the shopping mall and choose a suit for Li Yu. Su Yin tries to help him tie his tie, but Li Yu stops him and says he can do it himself. Su Yin wants to just forget about this purchase, but Li Yu is determined to insist and will not accept the suit as a gift. This surprises Su Yin, and he thinks of all that Li Yu has been through and why he feels this way about other people's gifts. Uh, Su Yin urges him to accept the suit as a thank you for his future work, to which Su Yin says that he will invite director Jian to dinner in appreciation of the suit. But Su Yin is not happy because he is called a director and not a brother. At dinner, Su Yin gives Li Yu a very hot chili salad, which makes him gag. The next day at work, Su Yin gets a bad report that could cause him to lose a lot of money. At this point, he gets a call from Su Ling asking him to let him start working. Su Yin snaps at him, saying she doesn't want to see him and hangs up. He is informed of the arrival of new information regarding the case and goes to the meeting, taking Li Yu with him. In the car, Su Yin notices Li Yu's unhealthy appearance and yells at the driver for turning off the air conditioning. Su Yin is worried about today's meeting, as a lot of money depends on it, and asks Li Yu to make sure he stays sober. He stresses to Li Yu the importance of always being prepared for different situations and not to assume that he will succeed because of his family, as he will be seen as a naive young man. After hearing this, Li Yu breathes out and thinks of his own. Su Yin talks about his experiences and the killings he suffered because of his naivety. And Li Yu listens attentively, feeling a little sorry for him for what he had to endure. During the meeting, Su Yin is still drunk and wants to sleep, but Li Yu tries to bring him to his senses with a glass of water. Su Yin knocks the glass out of his hands and, with a drunken look, asks to be allowed to sleep. Li Yu takes him to his room and puts him to bed. Ashamed of Su Yin's curse, Li Yu turns away and carelessly throws away the bedspread. Su Yin woke up and asked for water, and Li Yu fulfilled his request. When Li Yu saw Su Yin drinking water carelessly with a cold sweat, he turned his head away. Su Yin asks him to buy him something for his hangover, but before Li Yu can get up, Su Yin falls asleep on his lap. Li Yu knocks him off his feet and leaves his room at a fast pace. In fact, Su Yin was not asleep, but just playing with Li Yu. The next day, Li Yu suggests that they return, but Su Yin is outraged at this suggestion because he now has no proper clothes and asks the former to go and buy him some. He asks him if he knows his size, and Li Yu laughs and says that he has an idea. The Woes arrive at Su Yin's grandfather's house, and he is very happy to see his old friend's grandson and invites them in with a smile. While the grandfather prepares a meal, Su Yin and Li Yu decide to take the grandfather's boat and go fishing. While waiting for the fish to bite, Li Yu falls asleep. 
but Su Yin wakes him abruptly when he notices that the fish has begun to bite. Together they caught their first fish, but they had to catch two more. The fish was very slippery, and Su Yin could not hold it, so it swam on Li Yu and stained his suit. Su Yin gives Li Yu a towel and invites him to go swimming. Li Yu refuses, and Su Yin throws him his old suit to change into. When Su Yin sees Li Yu's well-pumped body, he asks how he has achieved such a result, and Li Yu tells him that he is a second-class martial artist. Su Yin asks what kind of sport, and Li Yu replies by mentioning the rumors about John Su Yin that he is a boxer. Su Yin gets a call from his grandfather, telling them to come back because the food is ready. He notices how beautiful Li Yu looks, so concentrated on fishing. He decides to tease Li Yu, but when he catches his eye, his heart starts beating fast, and he gives up the idea and simply reports his grandfather's call. During the meal, the grandfather advises his grandson on how to work with the project. But the grandson replies that he already knows all this and asks him not to worry about it. Grandpa wants to prepare a room for Li Yu, but Su Yin says that it is unnecessary and that he can sleep in his room, and Grandpa agrees, confusing Li Yu. Su Yin is about to take a shower and teases Li Yu not to look, to which Li Yu takes a laptop and reads the news, which upsets and irritates Su Yin. Su Yin comes out of the shower smiling and returns to the room, smiling and eager. When he enters, he finds Li Yu already asleep, which makes him angry, so he wakes him up and sends him to the shower. Su Yin spills water on one of the bedspreads. Li Yu returns and asks what happened, and Su Yin blames it on an accident. Su Yin asks Li Yu to lie down and teases him about being afraid of him. As Li Yu goes to bed, he thinks that working for Su Yin is not so bad, and that he can learn a lot from him as an experienced businessman. Although he is sometimes difficult to bear, Li Yu can't sleep and wants to go outside, but Su Yin catches him by the shoulder, which Li Yu doesn't like. He tries to throw Su Yin off, but Su Yin holds onto him and they fall off the bed onto the floor. Li Yu, irritated, gets up and asks about the other man's orientation, to which he is told that Su Yin is gay and that he has liked Li Yu since they first met. Li Yu is about to leave the room, but Su Yin beats him to it and apologizes for his behavior as he leaves. When he gets to the other room, he regrets his behavior and falls asleep almost as soon as his head hits the pillow. The next morning when Su Yin comes down to the living room, he is happy to see that Li Yu has stayed and smiles to greet him. Li Yu, who was drinking coffee, just turned away and replied coldly. Throughout the day, Li Yu ignores all of Su Yin's attempts to start a conversation, and he decides to get rid of the event to talk to Li Yu alone. Su Yin apologizes sincerely and asks him not to jump to conclusions and give him a chance to communicate normally, and also understands if he wants to quit and will not interfere with him, but will help him by talking to Li Xuan. Li Yu replies that he is not going to quit and that he doesn't need to bother. Su Yin has driven Su Yin to his destination and dropped him off, and he smiles sweetly and winks at Li Yu as he leaves. Three days later, Su Ling and Li Yu arrived at work and waited for Su Yin. When Su Yin saw Li Yu smiling at his brother, she was jealous. When Su Yin came in, Li Yu said that they had to go to the hot springs again, and Su Yin said that he would take him for two days. Su Yin interrupts the conversation with a question about a job for him, and Su Yin looks at his brother with a frown. Su Yin's cousin Bai Xin Yu arrives, and again at night, Su Yin has a headache, but Xin Yu does not understand what is wrong. Su Yin gives the project plan to his two interns and promises them that if they see what's wrong, he'll give them a project to do on their own, and the profits will be all theirs. While trying to persuade his cousin to stay out of the business, Li Yu realized what was wrong with the project and explained it to everyone. Su Yin is willing to take over the project and instructs Su Lin and Li Yu to help Xin Yu, which is met with Bai Xin Yu's dissatisfaction. Su Yin warns them that this project is at least a year and a half long, and that if they take it on, they will not be able to leave halfway through, but they strongly agree. As Li Yu leaves the room, he overhears Su Yin suggesting that they have lunch together. During lunch, Li Yu has a serious talk with Su Ying about the new project. He suddenly begins to behave in a way he has never behaved before, very sociable and caring, which surprises Li Yu. He gives Li Yu an expensive gift, which makes Li Yu very angry. Li Yu is indignant at being treated like a girl, but Su Yin takes his hand and says that he just wants to give a gift to the person he loves. Li Yu pulls back his hand and refuses, but Su Yin promises not to give up, which irritates Li Yu. Su Yin inspects Su Lin and Li Yu's work and is very pleased with the results. Su Ling invites him to an exam party, to which he replies that of course he will be there and take care of all the arrangements. After saying goodbye to them, Su Yin began to think of a plan to win Li Yu's favor. In the evening, everyone saw that he had taken the organization of the party seriously and had prepared a party of the highest quality and on a grand scale. Su Ying looked at her with a strange expression when he saw Li Yu talking to the girl. Everyone asked Su Ying about Li Yu's practice, and he was happy to tell them that he was doing very well. When he saw that the girl Li Yu was talking to was cute and innocent, he looked at her unkindly and worried about her relationship with Li Yu. Later in the evening, they talked about Li Yu and his practice, which made Li Yu feel uncomfortable. 
Su Yin hints to the girl that Su Ling would be a better match for her than Li Yu, which annoys the latter. Li Yu suddenly grabs Su Yin's arm and drags him away from everyone. On the balcony, Li Yu reprimands Su Yin for embarrassing his classmates and asks him to stop because Su Lin does not like them. Su Yin believes what he says, but still insists that he is too protective of the girl. Su Yin tells him that girls and men are not much different in this respect and invites him to try it with him. Li Yu, blushing, tells Su Yin to stop thinking and talking like that, and whoever he likes will definitely not be him. Su Yin's insolence is overwhelming and he jumps on Li Yu and kisses him. Li Yu angrily throws Su Yin to the ground and swings for a punch, but hesitates because he knows the power of his punch as an athlete. But Su Yin, without any instinct of self-preservation, continues to tease and provoke Li Yu. Li Yu, having lost the last strength to restrain himself, strikes Su Yin and silently leaves him lying alone on the ground. Thinking about what happened in the restaurant, Su Yin did not regret his actions and wondered what he should do next. He suddenly received a call from his brother and picked up the phone to find that it was Xiao Li. It turned out that the two of them were drunk and couldn't get home. Su Yin suddenly gets ready and asks him not to hang up, but the strength leaves Li Yu's hand and he drops the phone. When he arrives, he asks the staff to take Su Lin to the car and takes Xiao Li's arm. When he wakes up and sees Su Yin, Li Yu asks him to pick up Su Lin and take her home. Su Yin is surprised that Li Yu cares about others, even in his condition. He drove her to the hotel and carried her into the apartment, putting Li Yu on the bed. He wants to take advantage of Xiao Yu's moment of powerlessness, but gives up the idea and tenderly touches his lips with his fingers. After taking a shower, he returned to the room where he had left Li Yu and decided to help him undress, thinking that tomorrow he could think of something to explain to him. Li Yu awoke from the movement around him. Still disturbed by the alcohol, he asked them to leave him alone and left with anger in his voice and a drink on his face. Not understanding Li Yu's words, Su Yin approaches him and tells him that he looks even sweeter than usual. Li Yu tries to hit him, but he easily catches his drunken fist and laughs at his actions in such a state. He seizes the moment and kisses Xiao Yu again, making him feel ashamed and angry. Su Yin tells him with a smile what motivates him and that he just wants to get to know him better, which makes Li Yu afraid. Su Yin finally moves away from him and does not stop teasing him. Li Yu doesn't understand why he's letting her do it this time and what's wrong with him which makes him even angrier. Su Yin is surprised to hear from his brother and asks him about yesterday. Li Yu hears Su Ling talking to his brother, and on the other side of the phone, something cracks loudly, which frightens Su Ying a little. The next day at work, Su Yin meets Li Yu and asks him to come to his office. In the office, he talks about his work as if nothing happened yesterday, which makes Li Yu very angry. He finally breaks down and attacks his boss, and one last time, showing respect for Su Lin, warns him to leave him alone. Su Yin can't stand this attitude and fights back and starts yelling at him for his behavior. Li Yu shows no respect, which infuriates Su Ying, and he lunges at him. But Li Yu easily knocks him down and tells him to keep talking to see how fearless he is. A fight ensues between the two, with Su Ying clearly on the losing end, missing many blows. He grabs the first thing that comes to hand and throws an ashtray over the edge. This infuriates Li Yu even more, and he begins to strangle his boss. Su Yin, forgetting his instinct of self-preservation, pulls Li Yu toward him and begins to tease him in his own way. Gathering his last strength, he pushes Li Yu to the ground and begins to talk about himself in an arrogant tone, forgetting to mention the previous evening. Teasing and mocking his opponent more and more, he runs around the table in his office. They are surprised to hear from Li Yu. He calls Su Ling, and Su Ling answers him gently, which makes Su Yin think that he has fallen in love with his younger brother.